Good evening. Um, I'd like to call the Zoning Board of Appeals for Tuesday, April 16th, uh, 2024 to order. Will the city call the roll, please? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Defoe? Here. Mr. Friedman? Here. Mr. Rogers? Here. Ms. Libet? Mr. Jenkins? Present. Mr. Havis? Madam Chair, you have a quorum to conduct business. Uh, thank you. Are there any communications? Not at this time. Okay, so we will move into our public hearing. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined us before, let me just briefly describe how we conduct business. Uh, the city will call the case by the case number, read a brief description of the case. We ask the appellant to then step to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Uh, there's also a sign-in sheet there, if you would sign in, please. And then explain to the board what you're asking for and why. Uh, then the city will read uh, findings of fact. We'll ask you to agree with those facts or add any other facts at that point. Then we'll hear the staff recommendation. Again, you'll have another opportunity to uh, speak to that recommendation. Then we'll open it up to public comment. Uh, if there's anyone from the public to speak on a case, that would be your opportunity to speak. And then we'll turn it over to the board to make a decision and then move on to the next case. Uh, so with that, will the city call the first case, please? Uh, case 24-06, uh, staff requesting to postpone case 24-06 to a certain date of June 4th, 2024. Okay, um, can I have a motion to postpone the case 2406 to June 4th? So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, will the city call the next case, please? Case uh, 24-07, the appellant Kalad Dogger, representing the owner, ANH Investments LLC, is requesting the following from the board. A variance of two wall signs not facing a major thoroughfare, zero permitted, two proposed. The property is located on the west side of Telegraph Road between 10 Mile Road and Garner Street at 24905 Telegraph Road, Sidwell Parcel 2429276049, zoned I-1 Industrial. This appeal is to section 8.8.61 Subsection 1, Article 12, Chapter 99 of the Southfield City Code, more commonly known as the Sign Ordinance. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Hi, uh, my name is Khaled Dagger from Dagger Science and Graphics. Uh, I'm a 22476 Telegraph. We actually, we happen to be in Southfield ourselves. Okay, and, perfect. Uh, yep, if you could introduce yourself and step right to the microphone. These yeah. mics are, don't yeah. have a far of a distance. Uh, Mir Halwani. Uh, own uh, the uh, car wash and uh, the oil change there at that, at that property. Also own um, another location at uh, 11 Mile and Greenfield, uh, another Midas location. So three businesses total in Southfield. Okay, thank you. And could you just state your address for the record, please? Oh uh, yeah, 24921 Telegraph Road, Southfield, Michigan. Thank you very much. Okay, and then if one of you could explain uh, what you're asking for and why, please. Yes. Uh, we're asking uh, for a variance to have a sign approved um, for the car wash and the oil change uh, facing north. Uh, currently, the signs are only facing east, um, you know, and only signs uh, facing uh, two major thoroughfares are, are, uh, are allowed. Even though uh, they're not directly on, you know, their lot are not adjacent to uh, 10 mile, but they're technically facing 10 mile, the, the Midas who he happens to also uh, manage the, uh, the Midas uh, property there, um, is, 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 is a very open uh, view uh, to 10 Mile. Um, additionally, um, that's not only the reason that they're asking for a variance to, to take advantage of 10 Mile. Um, the, 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 the very good reason for that is um, Telegraph goes kind of like diagonal uh, in front of the building. And so his sign is really very hard to, 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 to be viewed uh, for people going on uh, southbound and northbound. Southbound because of, you know, the sign is facing east, uh, you know, and, and, and the highway is, is, is north, northeast or, or southwest. And also the property right to the south of him, um, their, 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 their building is pretty much on the, on the, on the, on the facing, you know, close to the right of way. I think it's the, is it a jewelry place there? Yeah. <coughs> so you can see they're, they're also being blocked, you know, when, when people are traveling northbound as well. So for those reasons, and also, you know, the fact that they are a car wash and people would like to know, see where the car wash is and, 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 and know that this is where it is, you know, in advance before they make a turn, 
I think it's also a good safety thing for people to know that this is where the car wash is, and so they could have time to take a t to make a turn and, and enter, um, you know, to, to go to the car wash. And also the oil change is, is, is a similar case and a similar type of business. Okay, thank you. Uh, will the city read the findings of fact, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, findings of fact of uh, case 24-07. The appellant, Khaled Dagger, representing the owner of Edge Investment, LLC, is requesting the following from the board. A variance for two wall signs not facing a major thoroughfare, zero permitted to propose. The property is located on the west side of Telegraph Road between 10 Mile Road and Garner Street at 24905 Telegraph Road, Sidwell Parcel 2429276049, zoned I-1 Industrial. This appeals to section 8.8.61, subsection 1, article 12, chapter 99 of the Southfield City Code, more commonly known as the sign ordinance. Properties to the north and south are zoned I-1 industrial and are occupied by an auto repair facility to the north and a pawn shop to the south. Properties to the west are zoned OS, office services and occupied by an office building. Properties to the east across Telegraph are zoned B3 general business and I-1 industrial and are occupied by a gas station and a bank. The subject property is zoned I-1 industrial and has a one-story 2,809 square foot car wash and a separate one story 2,432 square foot oil change facility. The site has one vehicular entrance and exit along Telegraph Road. The appellant is requesting 150.5 square foot wall sign not facing a major thoroughfare on the north side of the car wash and a 31.98 square foot wall sign not facing a major thoroughfare on the north side of the oil change facility. Two requested, zero allowed. The square footage of both signs is less than the square footage allowed for conforming signs facing the major thoroughfare. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you agree with those facts? Um, yes. Okay, are there any other facts you'd like to add at this point? Um, no, I, no, I okay, uh, will the city read the staff recommendation, please? Staff recommendation is for favorable, favorable consideration for the waiver requesting two additional wall signs not facing a major thoroughfare, zero allowed, two proposed. <laughs> This recommendation is based on the following. The proposed signs are consistent with the spirit and intent of the sign ordinance and the regulations which apply to the zoning districts. The proposed signs are in keeping with the character of the surrounding area and would not have an adverse or detrimental effect on adjacent or surrounding properties, and the proposed signs will not interfere with or be objectionable from a standpoint of traffic safety. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else you would like to add? Okay, no problem. Uh, we will open it up to public comment. Uh, if you are here from the public to speak on this case, this would be your opportunity to step forward. Uh, seeing none, we will close public comment and turn it over to the board. Uh, Mr. Rogers? Yeah, my only comment is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go along with the city, uh, but when you're coming southbound down Telegraph, you have the ground sign that you see clearly. So I understand that you're looking for more visibility on that big wall, yeah. um, but you do see that car wash sign. I mean. You, you do see the car wash sign, but you know, um, you know, having to identify the building from further away, um, I don't think the pole, the pole sign does it, you know, me being in the sign business and looking at signs, uh, you know, I, you know, a uh, pole sign it really helps, but really what identifies a building to, to me, in my opinion, is, is a decent sized wall sign. And also for, for the, you know, for how um, Telegraph is almost like a highway, for the size of the letters that you could do on, 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 a, on, a, on, a, on a ground sign or a pole sign versus on a wall, it's, 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 they're two very different, uh, you know, things in my opinion. Yeah, no, I understand, I understand your issue. Like I said, I'm going to go along with the uh, city's uh, recommendation. Uh, okay, thank you. Can you repeat what you just said? He, um, go ahead, Mr. Rogers. Oh, I said I was going to go along with the city's recommendation, but I was just curious as to why the ground sign isn't adequate enough so that when you're going southbound on Telegraph Road to see have any visibility to know that the car wash is there. But the uh, the uh, appellant is saying that the um, the ability to turn into the car wash at those speeds and not see the sign until your the last second is the main reason why they want to have north elevation, you know, 
car wash on there so you see it probably before you hit the 10 mile traffic light because you really don't see it until you like either are stopped at 10 mile or you're, you're driving slowly through there and you see it. You probably have to go through it a couple times to even recognize it because there's so many other businesses on the, uh, that side of Telegraph. Okay. Yes, Mr. Dickens. Uh, I'm thoroughly familiar with that area because I drive by there all the time. Uh, you know, Can you I bring your microphone just a little bit closer oh, to you, please? Okay. I said I'm thoroughly familiar with that area, and I think uh, I, I support uh, the recommendation myself because, you know, I, uh, I think it will because you, sometimes you drive by there, and before you know it, you're already by there before you see the, the car wash. Okay. Uh, so... I'm in favor. Okay, thank okay, you, thank Mr. You. Friedman. I have no issues with it. Okay, I uh, agree with my colleagues. Um, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to kind of see the double signs. That's not usually something we see, but um, I think size-wise, I is the reason that I uh, support it. So, Mr. Friedman, uh, Mr. Uh, Rogers, will you make a motion for us? Yes. Thank you. In regard to ZBA case twenty-four dash zero seven. The Pellant Khaled Daguerre, representing the owner ANH Investments LLC, is requesting the following from the board a variance for two wall signs not facing a major thoroughfare, zero permitted, two proposed. Properties located on the west side of Telegraph Road, 24905 Telegraph Road, suitable parcel number 24-29276049, zoned I 1 Industrial. Um, I make a uh, motion to uh, approve the uh, variance being requested and um, basing it on the fact that the proposed signs are consistent with the spirit and intent of the sign ordinance and the, <coughs> and the regulations which apply to the zoning district. The proposed signs are in keeping with the character of the surrounding area and would not have an adverse or detrimental effect on adjacent or surrounding properties and the proposed signs will not interfere with or be objectionable from the standpoint of traffic safety. Okay, thank you. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Your request is granted. Uh, please continue to work with the city on your permitting. Okay. Thank you very much for your approval. Thank you. Thank have you. a good evening. Good night. Um, will the city call the next case, please? Yes, ma'am. Case number 24-04. The appellant, Cruffalo, Cruffalo Mims, lessee, representing the owner, Southfield and 10 Properties, LLC, is re requesting the following, following variance from the board. Setback variance of 60 feet from the South Road right-of-way line, 60 feet required, zero feet proposed. Setback variance of 60 feet from the Hilton Drive right-of-way line, 60 feet required, zero proposed, to permit ingress and egress points from a thoroughfare that is not a major thoroughfare. The property is located on the northeast corner of Southfield and 10 Mile Roads, Sidwell Parcel 2424353001, located at 25080 Southfield Road, Zone B3, General Business, and P, Vehicular Parking. This appeal is to Section 5.169, Article 18, Chapter 45 of the Southfield City Code, more commonly known as the Zoning Ordinance. All right, thank you. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Uh, if you could state your name and address for the sure. record, please. It's uh, Creflo Mims, uh, 30104 Sparkleberry Road in uh, Southfield, Michigan. Great. Thank you. And if you could explain to us what you're asking for and why, please. Okay. Yep. Well, we're trying to reopen the uh, what was formerly the Paradise Lounge, I believe. Uh, we're going to basically open it up as a restaurant, um, a little not fine dining, but in between the fine dining and casual. Um, and um, I guess the place has lo been located there since the 90s. And my father used to go there frequently. So uh, we're just basically trying to reopen it and breathe some life back into that neighborhood. Okay. Um, do you want to speak to, or we can, we'll get to it into the, in the details. Will the city read the um, findings of fact, please? For ZBA case 24-04, the appellant, Creflo Mims, lessee, representing the owner, Southfield and 10 Properties, LLC is requesting the following variances from the board. Setback variance of 60 feet from the Southfield Road right-of-way line, 60 feet required, zero feet proposed. Setback variance of 60 feet from the Hilton Drive right-of-way line, 60 feet required, zero feet proposed. 
and to permit ingress and egress points from a, ma from a thoroughfare that is not a major thoroughfare. Property is located at the south northeast corner of Southfield Road and 10 Mile Roads, Sidwell Parcel 2424353001, zone, um, located at 25080 Southfield Road, zoned B3 general business and P vehicular parking. The subject property is developed with a multi-tenant commercial shopping center. Properties to the north across Hilton Drive and east are zoned OS office service and R2 single family residential and are developed with a general office building fronting Southfield Road and the Chateau Villa condominiums respectively. The properties to the south across 10 Mile Road are zoned B3 general business and OS office service and are developed with a Sunoco gasoline station and several multi-tenant office buildings fronting 10 Mile Road. The property to the west across Southfield Road is zoned B3 general business and is developed with a CVS pharmacy. The entire site contains 2.15 acres of land with 226 feet of frontage on Southfield Road and a depth of 353 feet along 10 Mile Road. The recently approved special land use request was to allow a restaurant with bar lounge within the B3 general business zoning district. The following variance cases for the property were heard by the Zoning Board of Appeals between 1976 and 2004. ZBA case 76 Dash 141 denied a temporary waiver of 13 parking spaces for an after hours club in 1976. ZBA case 9328 granted a waiver of eight parking spaces for a Pizza Hut restaurant in 1993. ZBA case 9454 granted a waiver of six parking spaces to accommodate a hair and nail salon in 1994. ZBA case 0364 rescinded all prior cases and granted a, a waiver of 87 parking spaces for Paradise Club at the subject tenant space on November 18th, 2003. ZBA case 0470 granted a waiver of an additional eight spaces for Paradise Club on 10504. And ZBA case 0712 rescinded the two prior parking waivers for 95 parking spaces on April 3rd, 2007 due to the Paradise Club vacating the center. The City Council approved the expansion of the Paradise Lounge with new operator into the basement of the subject tenant space as part of PSP 18-0001 on March 26, 2018. Paradise Lounge also obtained a new parking variance of 31 spaces on June 5th, 2018 from the Zoning Board of Appeals as part of ZBA case 1804 which still apply. Paradise Lounge did obtain building permits and all required trade permits. However, they never obtained a certificate of occupancy, though it appears from Street View Maps and City Research that they were occupying the space and conducting business in October of 2020. Article 18, general, B3 General Business, Section 5.169 of the uh, Southfield Zoning Ordinance was amended on October 21st, 2021 to require that drive-in and fast food restaurants, any restaurant with a drive-through or bar lounge, and any restaurant open 24 hours must obtain special land use approval and have a building setback of at least 60 feet from any street right-of-way line. Further, the amendment required that ingress and egress points for these uses be directly from a major thoroughfare. Per Article 2, Section 5.7 of the Zoning Ordinance, a major thoroughfare is defined as any street with an existing or proposed right-of-way of 120 feet or more. Although there are two ingress-egress points off of 10 Mile Road, which is a major thoroughfare, the closest access to the actual tenant space is from Hilton Drive, which, where intersecting Southfield Road, has a right-of-way width of 120 feet, but then narrows to 40 feet in width at the drive access to the center. The existing building was constructed in 1961 prior to the adoption of the city's current zoning ordinance. Therefore, not only are the existing building setbacks non-compliant for restaurants with bar lounges, but the entire building is also legal, legal non-conforming for front um, and side <coughs> yard setback requirements. Uh, 25 feet required zero feet existing and 15 feet required zero feet existing respectively. The appellant is facing a hardship and practical difficulty in that the existing building and tenant space already configured for restaurant bar use is non-conforming. If the former occupant would have obtained their certificate of occupancy prior to October 16, 2021, the 60-foot setback and ingress-egress from a major thoroughfare would have been considered legal non-conforming 
and the appellant would not have had to, um, not have been required to obtain variances from the board, um, nor would they have been required to obtain special land use approval from city council. Okay, thank you. That was a lot of facts. Lot of facts. No, <laughs> do you agree with those facts? <laughs> I do. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add right now? Um, no, not at this time. That okay. Was, that was no thorough. problem. <laughs> uh, can we receive the staff recommendation? Staff's recommendation is to approve the variances requested based upon the following. The variances requested will have minimal adverse effects on the surrounding properties, especially since the building has existed in the same location since 1961 in prior ZBA cases have referenced an after hours club or restaurant with bar lounge in the same tenant space as far back as 1976. The appellant is facing a hardship and practical difficulty in that the existing building and tenant space already built out for restaurant bar use is not conforming. If the former occupant would have obtained their certificate of occupancy prior to 10 16 21, the 60 foot setback and ingress egress from major thoroughfare issues would be considered legal non-conforming and the appellant would not have had to uh, not have been required to obtain variances from the board and the proposed variances requested are still in keeping with the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance okay thank you anything else you'd like to add um, no, no okay else. perfect um, we're going to open public comment on this case okay. if there's anyone here who wishes to speak on this case now would be your opportunity to step forward uh, seeing none, we will close public comment and turn it over to the board. Um, Mr. Friedman? Uh, I have no issues for it. In fact, uh, you know, I, I find, I don't see why it, the building doesn't already have uh, egress points for a major thoroughfare, uh, considering that there's two entrances to that parking lot from, from 10 Mile Road. And I, you know, I, I live right near there, actually. Really, rather there weren't uh, en both entrances to, onto, onto 10 Mile Road because that, that one that's closest to the South Hill Road does have a lot of people thinking they can make a left, where, where the mm. left turn lane is always backed up all the way, mm. you know, to the uh, a quarter of a mile. But um, so, so I mean, and, and I don't think that Hilton Road uh, entrance is, is 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 an issue. I mean, uh, so I, I really have no issues with it at all. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> well, the, the, the real statement here was the proposed variants requested are still in keeping with the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance so i'm fine with everything okay thank you um mr rogers i have no issues okay yep to me i think this is you know a cleanup due to timing of when the um you know uh when whatever we changed in the city in 21 so um who wants to make mr Friedman, will you make a motion oh sure In regard to uh, ZBA case uh, 2404, the appellant, Jeffrey Mims, the C, representing the owner of Southfield and 10 Properties LLC, is, re is requesting the following variance for the board a setback variance of 60 feet from Southfield Road right of way line, 60 feet required, 0 feet proposed, a setback variance of 60 feet from Hilton Drive right of way line, 60 feet required, 0 feet proposed, to permit ingress and ingress points from a thoroughfare that is not a major thoroughfare. The parcel is Property is located at the northeast corner of Southfield and 10 Mile Road, civil parcel 2424 uh, 3530001, located at 25080 Southfield Road, zone B3 general business. Um, I move that we grant the variances uh, in that they will have minimal, minimal adverse effect on the surrounding properties since the buildings existed in the same location since 1961, and the appellant is facing a hardship and practical difficulty. In that the existing building tenant space already built out for restaurant bar use is non conforming. Um, and that the proposed variance is in keeping with the spirit of the zoning ordinance. All right, thank you. Can yeah. I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, your request is granted. Get your certificate of occupancy as quickly as you can okay. so you don't get caught right. up in any other administrative <laughs> troubles. All right, thank, All right. thank, thank you. you. Have a good evening. Uh, will the city call the next case, please? Yes, ma'am. Case 24-05, the appellant Roger Goldstein, tenant under contract representing the owner T-12 office owner LLC is requesting the following variances from the board. A variance of seven feet of front yard building setback, 60 feet required, 53 feet proposed. A variance of the screening wall on sides of a restaurant with a drive-through. A variance of 
of the front yard landscaping requirements, 50% required, 42% proposed. The property is located on the west side of Telegraph Road, north of 12 Mile Road, Sidwell Parcel 2408. 451013 located at uh, Zero Telegraph Road, currently zoned ERO-M Education Research Office Limited, proposed to be rezoned to B3 General Business. This appeal is to Section 5.169 and 5.170, Article 18, Chapter 45 of the Southfield City Code, more commonly known as the Zoning Ordinance. All right, thank you. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, I'm actually Lainey Cowden, um, representing Robert. Uh, he works for Panda Express as the representative for the proposed building that's going on the site. Um, I'm the architect. Okay, so hold team. on one second. Yes. Unfortunately, we need to get you authorized because you are not authorized to speak on this case, if I'm not mistaken. I think Roger Goldstein is the only person authorized. Yes, yeah, so through the chair to the board and then to the um, person here. Are you able to get Roger Goldstein on the phone to give permission? Um, I could probably, maybe, think. Did you want to step away from the podium to try? Yeah. I can okay. This is that one then probably. Or I signed it and planted already. This is the first one. Brown, is it this? Is that what you're looking for? Oh. That's why I bring the documents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think the application was actually in this packet. I didn't see it. Mm. No matter how long. It usually is. It's usually the f uh, first document after yeah. the. Well, I've already signed the envelope accidentally as granted, so we're going to have to. We might as well get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Representing oh. another person who's representing another person who's representing okay. another person. Right. Like, I didn't know who was representing. Oh, oh there is also a property authorization to Gregory Earn. Do we know who Gregory is? I, I believe that if I might, the chair, they, they, that's the current property owner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, from so the Comerica they, space? Yeah, okay. so Panda. Uh, yeah, the Comerica Panda Tower. Express. Get them too. Mm hmm. So she represents the architecture. Well, at least it's earlier in California and not later. Same, same guy. Right. Yeah, we just double down. Can I ask the staff who um, they've been communicating with? Has it been through Roger? If, if I might, yeah. It, uh, no, it was actually Ms. Cowden. She has been taking it through the 
Planning Commission and City Council and everything, but okay. I mean, when we received the application. Okay, we so we don't know, she could have been authorized on prior planning She will, she had, yeah, she, they, um, with our applications, just the property owner signs the application mm -hmm. and um, they were the, the applicants for the um, special use in the site plan. I mean, it almost needs to be a separate question on the application. Yeah, who so will be presenting? Yeah, it's just kind of strange that. You may have represented your attorney or agent. But do they ever see the legal notice? I know, but I'm saying that's. We don't allow that usually unless you're there. Oh, or authorized oh them, right. Or, or when authorized them, right? Right, and I think yeah. that's what we changed in our last update to yeah. our procedures was that we would authorize like a phone call or an email. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, because that it does that property authorization does say, um, I'm we're, I'm authorizing Roger Goldstein to represent me at the zoning board of appeals hearing regarding mm -hmm. this appeal. And he delegated it. trying to track them down they're in california right now okay all right um i mean the number that we have i don't know if this is the same number mm -hmm. you're calling is a 626 number yes okay 799 yeah okay um i mean we can try email as well an email authorization would be fine you know if he's in a meeting or something it can respond quickly I guess that's the 626-799-9898 yeah, yeah. Uh, also, couldn't we try to call? Um, uh, before no anyone more. goes on, I don't think we should be reading I phone numbers. I was trying to not. I was trying to, <laughs> not. I was trying to stop before I get to the last four. X, 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 X. <laughs> right. But if the, you know, if Gregory Earn, because they're the actual property owners, wouldn't, if he was able to be reached, wouldn't that be? Yes. Okay. okay. I don't know if you want to try. Yeah. Right, either, yeah, either could authorize her. Yeah. We're giving you a way out. I mean, it just says to see in the form um, the signature of the owner, and then another line says the uh, authorization, if not the owner, um, representing himself. Something like that. I mean, it seems pretty clear. Do you have this page? Sure, it is clear. I'm just, I'm just trying to be nice. <laughs> I know. Like, I reviewed the proposal regarding my property in Southfield, and I authorized this person to yeah. represent me at the hearing. All right. <laughs> Enough said. But there is another phone number that we can try. Yeah. In the meantime, I could read the minutes again. <laughs> Sorry, Cable. I'm sure this is not what you want to be <laughs> watching or it's listening to. It's turning into Aurora Channel 13. <laughs> oh, I'm listening to Waynesville. <laughs> Too bad we didn't have her earlier in the agenda. She could have been working on it yeah. while we ran through the other hearings, but I don't want to close the hearings and move on to anything else. Well, we didn't go through numerical sequencing of the ZBA cases. We did 07 first. I think it's whatever one they close first, I know, right? I know. Okay. I was thinking we were going to table the because it was first on the mm -hmm. agenda. Then she would have gotten up there mm -hmm. and we would have known at mm -hmm. that moment in time mm -hmm. that she wasn't the actual authorized That's representative. True. We saved it for Mm -hmm. <laughs> the best intentions. I mean, we could leave the public hearing open and move on to new business and then come back. Any objections to that? No? Okay, I'm rolling. We're moving on to new business. 
So let's discuss our mandated continuing education. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> After a consultation with Councilman Brightwell, boards and committees through the city of, uh, through the city clerk's office, the director of the Department of Building Safety and Engineering, city administration, and in order to strengthen the Zoning Board of Appeals legal position, a change to the Southfield Zoning Board of Appeals rules of procedure is proposed in accordance with the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act 110 of 2006, which allows the adoption of rules governing operation of the Michigan Municipal uh, Operation and the Mun Michigan Municipal League, who suggests and provides an ongoing series of courses. The aforementioned requires the following in accordance with Article 6, Rules of proce Procedure, and added to Article 1, Organization. The City of Southfield does require each member to attend virtually or in person a minimum of a two-hour workshop for continuing education within the first two years of each term served, three-year terms. The continuing education is available through the Michigan Association of Planning and similar courses approved by the Director of Building Safety and Engineering. The fees for such continuing education will be paid by the City of Southfield Building Safety Engineering Budget and approved in advance by its director. We recommend a motion to approve the above. Okay. Um, so I guess we need um, a motion in order to discuss. So can I have a motion to approve the recommended uh, change to our uh, rules of procedure? So moved. Okay. Can I have a second? A second. Thank you. All right. Discussion. We definitely had a discussion at the last meeting. Yeah, I remain opposed to it, but uh, okay. the, the, man, the mandated portion, not the availability of it, and the, the providing the board members with the opportunity to uh, have the, 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 uh, the training that, that's been proposed, but just the, the uh, requirement that, a, that to be a member of the board have that, that additional requirement to it. Okay. Um, I know I uh, had a discussion and I believe the virtual options are offered outside of business hours. Can you yes, confirm that? Okay. Yes, they are. Okay. So that, at least for those of us that, you know, are employed and, you know, don't want to have to take time off in order to do uh, this requirement, there would be an opportunity for it to be after hours. Um, so, I mean, I think the fact that that is that I think kind of won me over. So I'm I'm satisfied uh, that there's a virtual option and that it's outside of work hours. Um, Mr. Rogers, any thoughts? Um, I the availability is is fine. I like the fact that it can be done whenever. It's convenient for our time and schedule, mm -hmm. and I don't have a problem with a two-hour continuing education once every three years. Okay, uh, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, I just want to make clear two hours. How often? Once every uh, three years. Once every three years, within the first two years of your term. Okay. Okay. Um, but it also, I know you said virtual, but we also can do it. Yes, there's in-person options as well. They're through the Michigan Association of Planners, and they provide a variety of training resources. Okay, very, very well. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we have a motion on the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. All right, it still passes three to one. Uh, so we need, who do I direct to update our <laughs> rules of procedure? Can I update, uh, ask the staff to please update our rules for procedures for when I uh, next review them in December. Okay, thank you. Thank All you. right, so we're gonna continue as it seems as the appellant is still trying to get authorization. Uh, so we have minutes from March 5th. Uh, did anyone have any? Concerns? Um, or changes? No, no? Okay. looks fine. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from March 5th? So moved. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then uh, the 19th? Any concerns? I just have, to, I mean, honestly, from the time I started on the board until now, these minutes are just night and day so much better. Uh, the recording and such that used to be the only option for minutes has just, uh, this is just tremendously better. So, any any changes to the 19th? 
Okay. I'm good. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes for the 19th? So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And it uh, does seem we our next meeting is May 7th. We have two cases uh, on and then May 21st as well. So uh, anything we need to discuss in regards to the cases that are coming up? Nope. Okay. Through the chair to yes, the board, uh, depending on what this, I forget her name, but this lady comes up with, I would recommend making a motion to postpone this case to a date certain and make it May 7th. Should we do that or should we put it with the case? We'll see the if case. she gets okay. a hold of someone or not. Okay. If not, May 7th. Okay. Please step to the microphone. I do have Roger on the phone. Okay. Um, if we just need, if you could put him on speakerphone. Okay. Roger, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay, perfect. He probably can't hear me, so if you can just ask him to authorize you, your full name, uh, to speak to case 2405, please. Yes. Uh, can you please authorize that I, Lainey Cowden, can speak on behalf of you for case number 24-05? Sure. This is Roger Goldstein with Panda Restaurant Group, Panda Express, and I, I do authorize Lainey Cowden to represent Panda in this case. Okay, thank you. All right, appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, you have a good one. Okay, thank you. Thank right. you for uh, allowing well, us. We were to able go to move through, through the rest of our agenda, so it worked out just fine. Um, okay, it. if you could please now explain to the yes. board what you're asking for and why. <laughs> uh, do I need to go back and finish name and address? Yes, please. Okay, um, Lainey Cowden with Heights Venture Architects, located at 3333 Warrenville Road, Suite 200 in Lyle, Illinois. Um, and then I'm able to jump into the- Yep, if you could okay. explain to us what you're asking yes. for and why, please. Uh, for this project uh, that is shown on the screen, this is a Panda Express and with the variances that we're requesting, we're <coughs> looking to <coughs> encroach the required 60 foot setback off of Telegraph Road by seven feet, bringing us to 53 feet off the property lines, along with requesting a variance to not build an unpierced masonry wall or provide a decorative fencing area around two of our property lines, one at the north and one at the west. And third, we would like to request a variance for an 8% decrease on our front yard landscape requirement, which brings us to 42% altogether. Uh, this is mainly brought to this parcel being cut from an existing office tower parcel, similar to how the Starbucks was back in 2017. Our main goal with this project was to still allow some synergy between the two sites and allow for parking to seem seamless with the rest of the development since it is a very well established area already. Um, with that, even decreasing to one of our smaller building sizes for the prototypical Panda Expresses being a 2400 square foot instead of 2700 square foot, which is our typical. Uh, this did cause us to encroach that building setback by seven feet, which four feet of that is due to our drive-through canopy that is facing Telegraph Road with the rest of our drive-through lanes. And due to that encroachment and having a drive-through lane plus the bypass lane, that has pushed our curbing for where the front yard landscaping off of Telegraph Road starts to be, I believe within five feet of that um, setback requirement, which is dropping into the 42% altogether. We are proposing additional landscaping at the exit only location where we're proposing to MDOT soon to close that off and provide landscaping and sidewalk connection there. So we will have additional landscaping added that is technically not within our property, but is within that roughly 19 feet of landscaping between the Telegraph Road curb cut and where our property line begins. So right off the bat, we're already pushed back roughly another 19 feet off the road. And with that as well, since we are 
creating this parcel out of an overall development. Our goal to not put up the screen wall separating us from the Starbucks, the existing ingress and egress, and the office tower itself, um, just mainly towards the synergy of the site. We don't want to disconnect ourselves from the rest of the development. We want to become a amenity to the office tower that does see a lot of medical and business related uh, patrons coming in. And with that, instead of proposing the unpierced masonry wall or the decorative fence, we are wanting to, on the previous plan that was up, um, we are increasing the amount of landscaping around the north and the west property lines to kind of act as a type of parcel barrier. So we are proposing to install additional landscaping where that requirement would be. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, will the city read the findings of fact, please? For ZBA case 24-05, the appellant Roger Goldstein, tenant under contract, representing the owner, T12 office owner, LLC, is requesting the following variances from the board. Variance of seven feet of front yard building setback, 60 feet required, 53 feet proposed. Variance of the screening wall on all sides of a restaurant with a drive through Variance of 8% of the front yard landscaping requirement, 50 feet required, 42% proposed. Uh, property is located on the west side of Telegraph Road, north of 12 Mile Road, Sidwell Parcel 2408-451013, located at Zero Telegraph Road, currently zone B3 general business. Subject property is currently developed with a parking lot for the Comerica office building. Property to the north and west is zoned ERO, Education Research Office Limited, and is developed with the Comerica office building. Property to the south is zoned B3 General Business and is developed with a Popeye's restaurant. Properties to the east across Telegraph Road are zoned B3 General Business and are developed with the Avis Ford and Matic Buick GMC automotive dealerships. The site contains 0.86 of an acre of land with 193.18 feet of frontage on Telegraph Road and a depth of 203.59 feet. The approved site plan indicates the construction of a 2,400 gross square foot standalone Panda Express restaurant with drive through The parking required for the restaurant is 24 spaces with 41 provided on site, needed to meet overall shared parking with the Comerica office building. The elevations consist of a mix of stacked chiseled stone, stucco, and simulated wood composite paneling. Article 18, B3, General Business, Section 5.169 of the Zoning Ordinance was amended on October 21st, 2021 to require that any drive-through, drive-in and fast food restaurants, any restaurant with a drive-through or bar lounge, and any restaurant open 24 hours must have a building setback of at least 60 feet from any street right-of-way line. The amendment is also out of the amendment also required a six foot screen wall on all sides of the property, except that the property line abutting a major thoroughfare could be reduced to three feet in height. The Popeye's restaurant to the south of the subject property has a front yard setback, an existing front yard setback of 30 feet and is deficient in front yard landscaping by approximately 15%, 50% required, 35% existing. The building and site are legal existing legal non-conforming as the restaurant was constructed in 1981 prior to current adopted standards. The Starbucks restaurant to the north has a front yard setback of 56.3 feet and obtained a variance of 2.7 feet of landscape width along Telegraph Road, 12 and a half feet required, 9.8 feet proposed. Um, as part of ZBA case 16-26 on October 4th, 2016. There is no wall existing on any side of the Starbucks property, therefore the building setbacks, landscaping, and site without a wall are also existing legal nonconformities due to the zoning ordinance amendments adopted in 2021. The appellant has worked closely with the city to come up with an approved landscape plan. The approved landscape plan indicates removal of one tree and the addition of 11 new deciduous ornamental trees, 117 deciduous shrubs, 79 evergreen shrubs, 47 evergreen trees, and ground cover. The original intent for requiring a wall for restaurants within the zoning ordinance was to buffer restaurant noise and traffic or drive through traffic from adjacent properties and less intense land uses, primarily residential. As noted, the property does not abut residential zoning and uh, abuts a parking lot for a commercial property with which it shares reciprocal parking and recorded agreements for cross access between properties. 
This is similar to the Starbucks property to the north, which also shares parking and cross access with the Comerica office property. Great, thank you. Uh, do you agree with those facts? I do. Okay, any other facts you'd like to add at this time? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay, thank you. Will the staff read the recommendation, please? Staff's recommendation to, is to approve the variances requested based upon the following. Uh, the variance request will have minimal adverse effects on the surrounding properties, especially since the existing restaurant properties to the north and south of the subject property are both legal nonconforming, legal nonconforming for front building setback and or landscaping, as well as legal nonconforming for lack of screen wall on the Starbucks property. Proposed 53-foot building setback and 25.5-foot buffer proposed along the uh, Telegraph Road frontage will sufficiently screen and buffer the restaurant and associated res restaurant activity from Telegraph Road, thereby meeting the intent of the zoning ordinance. Additionally, the sided right-of-way uh, in this area of Telegraph Road provides an additional 15 feet of landscaping, further strengthening the proposed buffer. Increasing the landscaping along Telegraph Road would eliminate required parking spaces for the entire site shared with the office building and or eliminate or de decrease widths of proposed drives, thus creating the need for additional variances and resulting in decreased mobility on site. Providing a wall around the property would serve no useful purpose as it abuts a commercial parking lot with which it shares reciprocal parking and access easement agreements. The landscaping provided along the frontage provides equal, if not more, coverage and buffer than a three-foot knee wall which would serve no useful purpose. Proposed variances requested are moderate in nature and again, are still in keeping with the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance. All right, thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? Nope. Okay, uh, we will open it to public comment. Seeing none, we will close public comment and turn it over to the board. Um, Mr. Rogers? Uh, I have no issues. It seems, uh, you know, if they want to have some symmetry in that parking lot, and there's, they're not asking for much actually. The number, the numbers are uh, low on the percentages. All right, thank you, Mr. Freeman. I have no issues with it, as the staff uh, mentions. The, I, I'm surprised the the amendments in 2021 required a seven foot masonry wall in a situation like this. As staff points out, it would serve no useful purpose. All right, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, I, I have no issues. I, uh, in the spirit of intent of the zoning, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay, thank you. Um, I also agree with the staff recommendation, so we need a motion, Mr. Friedman. It's up to sure. you. Sure. Uh, in regard to uh, ZBA case 24-05, the appellant, the appellant um, Roger Colstein, through his representative, um, representing T12 office owners LLC is requesting the following variances of the board, a variance of seven feet, a front yard building setback, 60 feet required, 53 feet proposed, a variance of the screening wall on sides of a restaurant with a drive through and a variance of 8% of the front yard landscaping requirement, 50% required, 42% proposed. The property is located on the west side of Telegraph Road, north of 12 miles, civil parcel 2408-451013. Uh, on Telegraph Road, currently zoned B3, general business. Um, I move that we approve these variances uh, because they will have minimal adverse effects on the surrounding properties, um, especially since the existing restaurant properties in the north and south are both legal non-conforming um, and do not have a, uh, a masonry wall. And the proposed 53 foot building setback and 25 .5 foot buffer proposed along the front frontage will sufficiently screen and buffer the restaurant um, from Telegraph Road um, and increasing the landscaping along Telegraph Road would eliminate requiring parking spaces for the entire site and uh, providing a wall around the property would pr serve no useful purposes and abuts commercial parking lot uh, which it shares reciprocal parking and access easement agreements and that these uh, variances are, are moderate and are in keeping with the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance. All right, thanks. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, your request is granted. Sounds like you've been working with the city, so continue to work with the city. Appreciate it. to get this built. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes. If I may address the appellant. Oh, one second. Um, we just postponed the case for the signs. I don't know if you'll be representing, but I believe yeah. Mr. Goldstein was uh, the only uh, applicant Correct. that we have. Mm -hmm. And it'll be you representing. Make sure you get with the building department and, and get an affidavit and saying that you can represent so we don't have to. Understood. No, I appreciate okay, working good. around it today. Thank, Thank you very much. much. 
Thank you. All right. Um, so that concludes our public hearing, and we've moved through the rest of our agenda. So we, does anyone have any miscellaneous? No? Okay. Um, then can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>